Well, good morning, online friends. What a pleasure it is to see you on this bright, sunshiny day here in Crown Point, here at St. John's United Church of Christ. We're, uh, we're happy you're joining with us. We see like 25 or 30 of you waiting uh, in the, uh, the, the, the waiting room there, the digital waiting room. And uh, so we want to welcome you in. We see, uh, we see one of our old favorites here, Norma Rubel is is walking in. So we're just uh, thrilled about seeing her today. And uh, we're glad that you're joining with us online. Now, today is our third Sunday Sing. So if you've got uh, a song request, Norma, come on in. Don't, don't let me talking deter you. Uh, if you've got a song request, uh, just jot that down. And we'll do our best to uh, take as many songs as we can uh, from our online friends and also from our folks who are here today. So you... Uh, You'll be thinking about that. And also, if you have prayer requests, we'd love for you to, hey, how are you today? I'm back. Good, Good to see you. Norma's here. We're so thrilled to see her. And uh, if you got prayer requests, uh, we do have a couple of special uh, situations going on. Uh, first one is the students have advised me that they're on their way to a, a local hospital. Their, uh, their daughter, Meg, she had come home from uh, Northwestern. And this morning she had a uh, had a seizure, so she's gone back to the hospital. So we need to be praying for Meg this morning, and as the Stettons are with uh, with their daughter, so let's uplift her. And we'll have other prayer requests uh, coming on. Uh, Steve Becker. Also, we want to uplift Steve this morning and Robin and their family. As the circumstances uh, there, Steve's been in a lot of pain, and uh, he's getting some reevaluated for his medications the pain so let's continue to remember Steve and Robin at this time as well and we'll take some more prayer requests like I said if you have uh, specific requests please list those and uh, we'll do our best to uh, get those and get your songs and we're going to have a good service today of worship and praise toward our great God all right so this is our third week of February next week concludes it and we get on into March some exciting things going on in March as we lead up into uh, the first week of April, which will be Easter Sunday. So make your plans now to be here for Easter Sunday. Uh, just one special service, and that will be at 10 o'clock on Easter Sunday for that day. We have some more special announcements next week regarding March and uh, all the things coming up. We're going to time change. We'll have our Gideon friend Don Scapel will be with us. Uh, month from today, and uh, I just uh, a lot to keep track of. And we're hoping and praying for some warmer weather. I think I saw a 40 in one of the, one of the weather forecasters, so we're, uh, we're really, really, really excited about that. You're welcome today. Listen to Laura. She plays. We're about five minutes away from service starting, so God bless you, and thank you for being here with us at St. John's today.
Well, good morning. So good to see you today. Well, what a, what a great response. I see smiles on faces. We've got a couple back that haven't been for a while due to circumstances and the weather and all of that. We just want to welcome, welcome everybody here or online today. Gail has got a full slate of announcements for us today. It's good to have her back. She's been a little bit under the weather there for a few weeks. But uh, praise the Lord, she's feeling much better. She actually helped us out this past Wednesday with the uh, with the <laughs> drive up, drive up. <laughs> there, there was a few of them that just drove by too. Yeah, so you're right there. Uh, but we had the drive up ashes on on Wednesday. We had several cars come for that, several families. So we appreciate that. And several came out for the service afterwards. If you missed any of that and you have Facebook, uh, you can see the replay of the service, uh, how, how we did that with the ashes, and uh, we, we'd be, ex be excited and pleased for you to, to watch that. But it was a good day, a good blessing, So, but this is our first day of Lent, first Sunday of Lent, I should say, and uh, join with us on this journey, and uh, it's going to be amazing as we go toward Easter, which is April 4th this year, April 4th, so we're a little bit... Uh, Five, uh, five weeks and a couple days away from uh, Easter Sunday, and we'll just be having the one service on Easter, one service, and it'll be our 10 o'clock service, and uh, nothing before or nothing after on Easter Sunday for that special day. All right, Gail, go ahead. Morning. Can everyone hear me? Hear me, Chuck? It's so nice to be back. It was a month, long month. Do any first-time visitors in person or online this morning? You know, if you're watching this as a recording later this week, please comment that this is your first time so we can honor you as our special guest. Our next church workday is Saturday, February 27th at 8.30 in the morning. Be sure to check the Calling Club names for today. Each week, three random names will appear under our Calling Club section in the bulletin. Reach out by saying hi to encourage our friends with a call or a card. This week is... Uh, let's see. This week's calling companies are Susie Joyner, Roy Rule, and Vivian Lachine. Hey, Vivian. We're calling early. We're calling early. There you go. <laughs> Revelation Bible Study continues online only. Contact Pastor Wendell if you're interested in past or present online studies. Amen. If you know anyone who could use encouragement from a Christian perspective, please give Pastor Wendell a name with their information. Contact methods for now are telephone call, email, letter by mail. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to lead folks to our church family. Contact forms are available on the Narthex counter. With all the, Go ahead, Gil. I'm sorry. I'm on a roll, sorry. With all the recent weather issues, we have pushed back our next drive up communion on April 4th, Easter Sunday at noon. More details as the time draws near. And for the contact part, for, for the Christian's perspective, this could be anybody. This could be a family member. It could be a, a friend, a co-worker, a neighbor, just someone that uh, you're able to, uh, you know, give us the information on. And uh, as we reach out to them, it will be in the, uh, uh, the, the, the least, uh, the only words coming to mind is uh, uh, offensive or aggressive. But we, we just want to say hi. We just want to let them know that uh, someone cared enough about them to mention them. And that we're thinking about them and we would like to pray with them or be of help to them in any way possible. So we just want them to know someone cares. And if some, the friendship develops from there, so much the better. But, uh, but we need you know, your input on that, uh, the folks that are part of your lives in however... Uh, you contact them. So thank you. Can we rise for the call to worship? Lent calls us to a journey of following Jesus. Lent calls us to walk in Jesus' steps. Lent calls us to worship together, sharing God's good news. Lent calls us to bring God's hope to all people. Lent calls us to journey with God. Let us worship God who walks with us each day. All right, you may be seated. This is that Sunday you all look forward to. 
where you're in charge. You're driving the car. You know, you're, uh, you've got the remote control. You know, you are in control. You get to pick the songs. We're going to sing a verse of piece of, uh, of most of the songs that you select. We're going to start with our east side here this morning. And uh, Kathy's going to monitor uh, online as well to see if we've got a couple picks coming that way. And we'll find the numbers for those as, uh, as we're able to. How about some hands for this side, the east side? Dave. 57. Say it again. Uh, 57. 57. What's the name, Dave? How sweet the name of Jesus sounds. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds. Does that ring a bell, Laura? Um, I'm not sure. Well, we can try. I'm not familiar with this one. All right. You know this one, Dave? No. <laughs> As my kids used to say, now, have you been talking to Don Niemeyer? <laughs> uh, uh, um, all right, we, we, we can try this one. We'll, we'll try it because, yeah, I was, it didn't ring a bell with me, me either, but uh, one verse won't kill us, right, Laura? Well, we'll give it a shot. Okay, Jan? 337, a wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord. 337, a wonderful Savior. I know we know that one. Okay. I need another one. Okay. Irene? 254. 254. Is that something about blood? Yes. What can wash away? All right. That's scary, isn't it? When, uh, <laughs> when you say a number and I know what it is, what can wash away? Okay. We got a bonus song over here. Anybody? 28, okay, that's, um, oh, goodness, help me out, Judy, I know what it is, but I can't think of it. Great is thy faithfulness. I kept wanting to say one day, and I knew it was wrong. Okay, great. Okay, so that's our four. You guys be thinking about yours, and Kathy will be monitoring online. 57, oh, we'll, we'll start out with this one, and, and hopefully it's an uphill thing here from... Uh, from Dave's new song, but we'll learn one today. 57. How sweet this name of Jesus sounds. so I apologize for that. But Laura carried us through. Thank you, Dave. That's a good one. It's, it's a good thing to pick one that we don't know it and, and, and try and learn it. I'll learn it. So thank you, Dave, for that one. All right. Uh, what do we got? 337. 337. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. First verse, Jan? All right. Good deal. Hideth my soul. And covers me there 
number three, Irene's 254. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Favorite verse, Irene? Okay, first verse. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the but certainly not least, uh, Judy's bonus pick, 28, Great is Thy Faithfulness. First verse, okay, Judy? Lent calls each of us to take up our cross and to trust the one who bears burdens with us. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us today. Thank you, Jesus, for your love on this journey to the cross. Amen. All right, you may be seated. We've got a time of testimony here. I've got a microphone, and I know how to use it. Anybody got a word of testimony? Something uh, that you want to praise God for, you're thankful for, a uh, circumstance? Chris? Okay. I don't know if I can get this. Well. well. My friend Steve, who had the cancer so bad uh -huh. in two places in his body. Yes. He's cancer free. Steve. Praise Steve, Steve Grish. Steve praise Grish. Cancer free. Praise the Lord. That, that is, that's a good way to start us off. Thank you. Thank you. Who else? Anybody? I'm looking around. Dave? Well, uh, yeah, I'm thankful that my brother-in-law is getting ready to come home from symphonies next week. Amen. Hospital beds being delivered Monday, and I was over there yesterday helping my sister get the furniture and everything arranged to, for the hospital bed to go in the front room and got his ramp all synchronized up so he can ride his electric cart from dialysis three days a week, and he'll hopefully go good. Amen. Now, this is Dale, who we've been praying for, right? Yes, you've been praying for Dale. All yes. right. Thank Amen. You. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who else? Who else? Well, I'm loud. Norma Rubel. My son, Todd, who lives in Florida, who's been very, very ill, has been released from the hospital. New hospital, new doctors, that's what it took. Mm. <laughs> a whole month in the hospital. Wow. But uh, he's home, he's very weak, he lost 25 pounds, uh, but he's getting infusions like every week, and uh, he's doing better, and he's 
supposed to be all right. Amen. Amen. Getting better. That's the that's the words we like to hear, right? Yes. Recovering. Amen. Thank you, Norm. We've been praying for Todd, and uh, we're thankful for that uh, that good news. That good news. Vivian. They, they can probably hear you here, but they can't hear you online. A neighbor across the street has been in the hospital and nursing home since August, and he just came home yesterday. Oh, wow. So he's been Lord. gone for six months. Praise the Lord. Wow. Amen. Praise the Lord that uh, back where he wants to be, right? Amen. Being it ever so humble, there's no place like home. We've, we've all learned that the hard way the past year, haven't we? Uh, who else? Anybody else? Chuck? God, uh, God's blessing on uh, 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 Bill and Carol Jensen as they attend the uh, final ceremony for her niece uh, who passed away, with, who suffered with cancer so long. Amen. Amen. That was, I think that was actually, was it yesterday, Chuck, they had that? So I mean, they're still up there with them today. Yeah. So they're away from us today as a result of being there. But yeah, Jill McDonald had passed away, and we're uh, many of you have prayed diligently, you know, for the past three or four years for Jill. So we're we're thankful for that, thankful for the family, and praying God's peace upon them. Amen. Who else? And Judy's with us today. We had a uh, had a had a good service. Uh, your husband was a popular guy among, amongst his family, wasn't he? <laughs> We had Guy Addison's funeral service and uh, Judy's family, the, the, they just, as I told her, they, uh, they just kept coming. When I said, who wants to say a word? They just kept coming and we, uh, uh, we were happy for them to come and they just uh, shared memories and thoughts and, uh, and blessings about Guy as they had a, uh, a personal family service uh, for him. Judy, our hearts are still with you as you're adjusting to this new normal and we're here for you as you need us. And I want to thank everybody for the cards and the prayers and uh, the visits after his passing. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Who else? Who else? I asked Don Lattis if he was behaving himself, and he just kind of said, well, I tried. even let you say it again. I will. God is good. Amen. Good to have you back with us, Bonnie. Bonnie had a little bout with car issues and stuff like that. And uh, like the rest of us, she doesn't like cold weather. Good to see the Boskies today. Yeah, thank you. Good to have you guys back. All right, anybody else? All right. Gail, how about you? Have you, have you talked enough, though? I feel selfish, but I've been forced around with blood pressure for like a year because of my migraines, and they got under control. Amen. Uh, Amen. It's always good to have things under control. Well, Amen. maybe the blood pressure, not me, though. Sorry. <laughs> uh, all right. Anybody else? I mean, I'll turn the microphone back on if there's somebody's got a, got a word. All right. Amen. Amen. All right, good. Dave, did you have something else? Uh, just as the weather changes, we're getting out of all this cold, terrible weather, and we're thankful for that. Hey, amen. Right, so. And uh, yeah, and along those lines, I mean, we, we certainly don't mean to make light of it, but as bad as it's been, I mean, we just see the stories coming out of Texas, and uh, I mean, people literally dying in, in chairs, trying to stay warm. And I mean, it just, uh, it breaks your heart. It breaks your heart that uh, some folks have, are suffering that way down there. So we, we need to uplift and pray for those folks as well. Amen. I'm looking forward to spring. Spring, spring, spring. All right. All right what is our next thing on the agenda here? Songs, more songs. All right, what have you guys got from this side? Okay, Norma, go ahead. Number one, second verse, right? 
Okay. Second verse, that's how great thou art. All right, uh, Bonnie. 330. I know it's familiar. What's the name? It is well. Okay. Okay, Chris. 151. Which is? Low in the gravy lake. Low in the gravy. All right. You're getting a jump on Easter, huh? Yeah. Sue? Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, 318. Three. 318, be still my soul. Okay. Is that in your repertoire, Laura? Yes. Okay. All right. I might be a, bit, a little bit weak on that one, but you guys will help me out. Be still my soul. Okay. Uh, anybody else? All right. Kathy? On my 456, onward Christian soul leaders. 456, onward Christian soul leaders. Okay. Uh, oh, that's from uh, from Phoenix. All right, the lot of us is from Phoenix. Onward, Christian soldiers, 456. All right, so we've got, uh, uh, that's our allotment. Let's get to singing here. Uh, number one, the second verse. How great thou art. We did the second verse. That's Norma's favorite. <laughs> First verse okay? Okay, first verse. Let me hear you baritones on that chorus, okay? When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea think for those of you that uh, were with us at the nursing home uh, singing uh, it seems like forever ago now uh, I mean we would sing that one song and uh, the first time one of the workers there uh, Anthony, Anthony? <laughs> and, and that was that's his name right Anthony and I mean he would he just built in on that course you know and we we were just kind of uh, I mean like hey that sounds really good and he helped us out a few times after that, singing this song. We'd always, uh, Laura would always uh, uh, coerce him into singing this song with us. And uh, I don't think he took much coercion there, but he, he enjoyed it too. But we really miss that. We, we just hope and pray that uh, as this pandemic uh, uh, comes.
comes to an end someday that we'll be able to get back in there and, and do those things and just share those joy-filled times with, uh, with those folks in the nursing homes. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, let's see, 3.30. 151. This was Chris's Low in the Grave He Lay. 151. He arose. We start out slow and we build. Low in the grave he lay. Jesus, my Savior, waiting the coming day. Jesus, my Lord, up from the grave he arose, he arose, with a mighty triumph o'er his foes. He arose, he arose, a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, he arose, hallelujah. Chris, that gets us ready for this Lenten journey, doesn't it? All right, now let's try the one K asked for us. What, 318, be still? Okay. Be still, my soul. Love the words here. All right. First verse, okay?
morning. to see everybody today. Who's ready for warmer weather? Me. Me. Okay. All right, me too. We start our journey of Lent today. Lent, that's the journey Jesus makes to the cross. Well, I don't know how he could carry that cross, do you? That cross was heavy. And, uh, it was painful. He was already been, he'd been, uh, been beaten and He's in bad shape, but he did it because he loved us. It's always good for me to know that Jesus loves me. He loves each one of you, too. He loves all of us, doesn't he? Amen. So as we collect for the food pantry today, let's think about the love of Jesus as we start this journey of Lent. All right. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> is from Exodus chapter 14 verses 21 through 31. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord drove the sea back by the strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. And as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen of all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Amen. Amen. Gail, thank you. Great job reading today. Great job. We're starting a, uh, a message series today called, called Knowing God. 
It's a series about Lent. So for the next six weeks, we'll be knowing God. And today, as Gail has just read for us, walking by faith in the wilderness. In the wilderness. God, there's so many different lessons that we can learn and apply to our lives today that the children of Israel went through all those many years ago. I can't tell you how many times you know, folks have said to me, oh, you know, the Bible is just so old, it's so antiquated, uh, there's nothing I can learn from it. I mean, we can see how God has dealt with his people. We can take past lessons and we can apply, apply them to present circumstances. And we of all people, as far as believers in Jesus Christ today, can understand how God dealt with his people way back then. What does the Bible say about God? He doesn't change. He says, I, I, I change not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, I mean, we can take circumstance, we can take situations, we can learn from history. One of the, one, one of the things history books says about uh, history, if, if we don't learn from history, we're what? Bound to repeat it, exactly. So we can learn from things that the children of Israel went through and we can apply them into our hearts and our lives today. Hopefully it makes us better people as we're on this journey to Lent so that we won't make the same mistakes they did. Granted, we're going to make mistakes. We may make different ones. We might even improve on some of the mistakes that they made. But God is still with us and he wants to guide us and he wants to direct us. So real quick this morning, as we start this series of Lent about knowing God and walking by faith in the wilderness, it's important to know that the Apostle Paul gave this same thought to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, that God calls us to walk by faith and not by sight. He calls us to walk by faith. Now that's not always the easiest thing to do. It's rarely the easiest thing things to do. But when God calls us to walk by faith and not by sight, he's got a direction and in whatever direction he wants us to go in always has a purpose. I'm always reminded, as Gail read this story, I mean, it's a story that we all know. I presume that we all know, you know, when God led the children of Israel out of Egypt and he led them up against the Red Sea. And, and a young boy asked me one time when I was teaching a Bible class, when we were talking about the Israelites coming up out of, out, of the, out of Egypt and the Red Sea and all of that, the young boy said, he asked me this question verbatim, why did God lead them to a place where there was no escape? Why did he lead them? Did God not know the Red Sea was there and he, and he led them up to that point? As I listened intently to the young man, you know, he was serious. He was concerned that God didn't know what he was doing and he had led his people to a place where they would be cornered and slaughtered and all the bad things would go. Did God not know? The answer, of course, is uh, of course he knew. He brought them to that place so he could demonstrate his power and so that they would have the faith to continue to follow him. And when he told Moses, stretch out your hand over the water, I mean, this wasn't some little puddle. It wasn't some little stream or something like this. This was a mammoth, mammoth, mammoth river. Rushing, roaring, mighty. And Moses stretched out his hand, as we know. You've all seen Charlton Heston, right? That Ten Commandments. He stretched out his hands and the, and the waters parted. And the children of Israel walked through on dry land. Well, that in and of itself, can you imagine being a part of that, that throng of people walking through that, seeing the wall of water there and the wall of water there, and you're walking through on dry gr ground? I wonder how many of them are thinking, oh boy, I hope that doesn't collapse. I hope it doesn't collapse. But they walked through on faith, and God called them to walk through on faith because he asked them to, because he led them to. And that's a lesson that we can learn today. Sometimes God will take us places, and you may have even said this to God. God, why am I here? Why is this happening to me? How do I deal with this, Lord? How do you, like, give me a clue, Lord. Do you not know what I'm going through? And we begin to question God. God wants us to follow him. 
By faith. By faith. Apostle Paul said in the book of Hebrews, too, without faith it is impossible to please God. But God's direction always had a purpose. He knew the Red Sea was there. He knew that they would come up against that, uh, you know, that, that, that barrier. But he knew that he would provide a way across for them. His direction always has a purpose. So whatever trial that you're going through, if you're watching online this morning, if you're going through a trial, you're going through a difficulty in your life and circumstances in your heart, God knows that. And he wants to lead you through that trial. He wants to bring you through on the other side of the sea as he did the children of Israel. And God provides a way for us along that way of whatever the trials are. As they crossed over the, the Red Sea, there became a time of, you know, there was a lot of people there. It was hundreds of thousands of people. And they couldn't exactly stop at the local, uh, you know, Jewel or Strax or whatever and, and, and pick up supplies, could they? They had to eat. And of course, at that point, the people began to forget what God had done. And they began to focus on their circumstance right then. Boy, we get in trouble when we do that, don't we? I know I do. Forget, forget the blessings. Forget the, the, the favors that God has done me in the past. And if I see something's not going exactly the way I want it to right now, I go, woe is me. Woe is me. Perhaps you've done that too. But God, with Israel as with us, God provides for us along the way. He gave them daily bread. I mean, that manna, that bread fell from heaven. You imagine going into your backyards and picking up food for the day? <laughs> that really puts it in perspective, right? Food for the day. And of course, many of them at that point, well, when the, after they'd eaten that bread for, you know, two or three weeks, a month, three or four months, however long it was, they began to complain, like, oh, they got stinking bread again. You know? Like, come on, why can't you have a, 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 a leg of lamb or a rack of beef fall from the heaven, Lord? They wanted something else. They thought they knew better what their needs were than God did. Now, I know none of us have ever tried to talk to God that way, right? Oh, man, sometimes we get wrapped up. Our problems are our problems. Our problems are real. And no way would I ever try to, to, to minimize your problems or my problems. But the focus of our problems still has to be on the Lord. They were hungry, and God fed them. If we're hungry, we gotta trust that God will feed us in some way, shape, form, or fashion. May not be exactly what we want, may not be exactly what we think we need, but God provides according to his needs. And as he provides, that can build our faith in him. God calls us to gratitude. He called the children of Israel to gratitude on that day. And their most glaring sin was their unthankfulness to God for what he was doing against him. Their murmuring and their complaining and their protesting rather than praising God for his deliverance from them out of the slavery and the bondage that they'd been in Egypt. All they wanted to do was gripe because they weren't getting the three-course meal that they felt they wanted. Sometimes we feel we deserve better and we display an arrogance to God that we know better than he does. And that arrogance, if we're not careful, can segue into an immaturity as we, as Israel, whined and complained about what they didn't have rather than what they did have. I do my best. I mean, I'm human just like all of us here too, but I do my best to be thankful to the Lord every single day. I try to wake up every day and as my feet hit the floor, I go, thank you, Lord, for this floor, for this house, for the, that it's warm, for the bed that I got to sleep in. Thank you, Lord, for all of that. I mean, I don't want to take those things for granted because many, many people around the world don't have those things. I want to be thankful for those things. I don't want to be immature and unthankful toward the Lord. I don't want to forget his blessings in my life. 
Even though right now might be a tough time that I'm going through, a tough time that you're going through, I don't want to forget what he's done in the past. Israel had forgotten because they were, you know, we're out here in the wilderness, we're going to die, we're going to roast, you know, we don't have air conditioning. At least back in Egypt, you know, we had cool places we could go to. I mean, they just complained about everything. We don't want to do that. We can learn from their mistakes and we can be grateful to God for his blessings. We can be grateful for his blessings. God called Israel as well as he calls us to obedience. Obedience is the ultimate test of faith. God didn't ask Israel to rationalize with him. He didn't ask them to sit down at the table and say, oh, let's talk about this. You know, he, uh, he told them what he wanted them to do, and he simply asked them, called upon them to obey. You and I today, we can learn a lesson from the scripture Gail's read for us today. We're called to walk by faith, not by sight. We follow a God of purpose. We may not always be able to see his purpose, but it is always there. And he always has our best interest at heart. Ours is a God who promises to provide today. He's never once failed any of us. Never once has he failed. And his provision calls us to gratitude today. Won't you trust him? Won't you praise him? Won't you respond in obedience to what God has done? I don't always understand everything. Some things go and that just blows my mind, literally. But God is trustworthy. He's loving. He's caring. He's gracious. And he cares about you today. He cared about Israel. And he just wanted them to obey. In all things. In all things. Do you know him as your Savior? If you're watching online, if you've never trusted Jesus, if you're watching this live or perhaps watching it recorded later on, we say here, trusting him is as simple as ABC. You need to admit you're a sinner. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You need to believe, be, believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, your sins personally. If you'll believe that and ask his forgiveness and confess with your mouth, the see, he'll forgive you of your sins. He'll come into your heart. He'll come into your life. He'll fill you. Fill you with his Holy Spirit. He'll save you from your sins. The word of God says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Will you receive his gift today? You could be here today and never received his gift. We'd love to talk to you about that. Note, make a note there in the notes. Pastor, I'd like to know more. I'll reach out, I'll contact you. If you're here today, just see me after service. We'll take the Bible and I'll show you God's word, how you can know Jesus is your Savior today. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you so much for your kind and attentive listening today. We've got uh, several prayer requests here. We've got, uh, as I said, we want to remember uh, Megan is at the hospital uh, having suffered this seizure. I don't have any update uh, on that, but let's continue to pray for her. Uh, I spoke with Susie this week. She had had a bout with COVID. She is feeling much better, <clears throat> so we're thankful for that. Steve Becker is uh, at a local pain clinic. He is uh, was having some very serious issues, and uh, he, he's in hospice care. So we just really need to pray and uplift Steve uh, and Robin at this time and their family, uh, you know, Jenny, Terry, the, the whole family as, as we uplift them in our prayers. Uh, and also our good friend, uh, he was here uh, last week, a week before, Robert Bowie with his mom. Uh, Robert's having some health issues. We want to remember him in our prayers today. And uh, also from online, Kathy said, uh, Glenda Hughes, who is watching her daughter, Teresa, is having knee replacement surgery this week. She asked prayer for that. And uh, also Tiffany, uh, spouse Fredericks, uh, her best friend, Rachel, is suffering from depression uh, due to, the, uh, to a best friend passing away suddenly 
or here recently. So let's remember her friend Rachel as she's going through these deep waters. You have prayer requests today. Prayer requests today. Anyone? This side. This side. Do you remember, remember Judy and her family is after the death of a guy? Pray for them as they navigate these new waters. Anyone else? Anyone else? We've had some full plates here lately with uh, prayer requests, haven't we? Let's continue to pray for the ones that are in our bulletin and the ones that are in our email that go out. Unspoken by the show of hands. All right, God sees your hands and hearts. Let's take a moment for silent prayer. Then I will pray and we'll uh, go to the Lord together. Father God, we thank you for this day that you blessed us with. I thank you for the songs that uh, were picked. Uh, Lord, I thank you for each hand that's been uplifted, spoken or unspoken, Lord, and for those that uh, are following online and requests that have been made. Lord, we pray for Teresa and Glenda's daughter with a knee replacement, for Tiffany's friend Rachel and the, uh, the situation she's going through mourning the loss of her friend. I continue to uplift Judy's family. Lord, of the loss of her husband, Guy, pray that you strengthen them and, and lift them up. And Lord, Meg, this morning, as she's even at the hospital right now with, with mom and dad and uh, perhaps other family members, Lord, that you meet her at the point of this need with this seizure and the circumstance that's happened again. Uh, and God, just touch her and lift her up. And Lord, we, uh, we ask that uh, we're thankful for Susia improving after the COVID. Lord, we've had several folks, Lord, good to have Vivian back today, Lord, as she's uh, not been feeling well either, and Gail as well. Lord, Steve Becker, we pray for him and Robin and their family and our good friend Robert Bowie. We uplift Robert in our prayers and the health issues that he has, has expressed. And Father, each unspoken request and a show of hands, and God, uh, we've got so many with cancer concerns on our, our prayer lists. Uh, Lord, we just uplift each one of these. And Lord, to just meet us at the point of our need. Help us to trust you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And God's people said together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, the ushers are going to come. We're going to receive our morning offering. If you're watching online, if you could drop an offering envelope in the mail or or drop it by the church office. We'd appreciate that. Every little bit helps. Everybody pulling in the right direction is always a, a blessing and a good thing. Amen. Go ahead, ushers. Thank you. Jesus is all the world to me. My life, my joy.
theology this morning. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Amen. Thank you, guys. Praise Father, Son, and God, thank you again for the gift and for the giver today. We rejoice in our ability to, to give back to you our tithes and our offerings to, to help God, uh, each other, and our community. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, ushers. All right. Our concluding song today is, let me get my book here. I serve a risen Savior. I was plugged into that uh, resurrection thing like Chris was with low in the grave he lay. 149. 149. Let's do the... I'll let you decide. First or last verse? Not everybody at once. <laughs> last verse. Okay. The last verse of 149. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian, lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. Walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Amen. Amen. Before I close in prayer. You know, I, I'm just, every time I sing this particular song, get, get, get down to that chorus, you know, thinking about him walking with me. I mean, there's various things go through my mind. The one song, in the garden with him walking us through the garden and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, Bonnie, I just get downright giddy thinking about walking with Jesus sometimes. And, and that's the journey he's invited us on as we're on this journey of Lent with his first Sunday walking with Jesus. And my prayer is that we'll all get giddy thinking about walking with Jesus and reestablishing that relationship and reaffirming that relationship with him as we are on this Lent walk. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Have a great rest of the day. And uh, hopefully the precip is rain and not snow later on today. That's, that's what I'm hoping for at least. But we want it to melt gradually, gradually, in, an, in an increased increments. So, but we'll see how it all goes. Amen. All minds clear? All right. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this day that you blessed us with. Thank you for the opportunity to be here and to worship you. Thank you for the great songs that were picked out, Lord, today. Our folks always do a wonderful job. Bless our week. We have the prayer requests that we've mentioned, Lord, and the needs that go along. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Walk with the King. Be of good cheer. Jesus said, I've overcome the world. Thank you for being here today.